Hey, there we are. Welcome to another episode of Frags and Beer Radio News, uh, where we get together and talk about the last week or so in Geek. Uh, and sometimes we talk about big uh, movie, TV, geek events, which we're going to do tonight. So I'm joined, as usual, by my co-host, Russell Michaels. Welcome, Russell. Hello. And returning to the show is Cranky T-Rex. Welcome, Cranky. Hey, thanks for having me back. So we're not going to jump, and you're welcome, but we're not going to jump right into Luke Cage yet. This is our Luke Cage special. Uh, We will let you know when we get there, and there will be spoilers. So if you have not seen... Tons of spoilers. Yes. If you have not seen the show yet in its entirety and you don't want anything spoiled, you might want to wait to watch the recorded version of this show after you finish Luke Cage. If you haven't seen it already, what the hell's wrong with you? Um, So... Before we get to that, though, we want to talk about some of the other cool things I found this week and some some really interesting, spooky, scary things. This is actually kind of a pre-Halloween episode, I guess, because some of this stuff is really creepy. Um, so I was digging around on um, on my news feed, and I found this article from motherboard.vice.com, um, which talks about Charlie Rose, which is a uh, Charlie Rose interviews a robot, this this robot that is programmed to look and emulate like a human that it has human features and can do human expressions, except that the, the back of the head's open so you can see all the electronics and whatnot. Uh, and I guess the creator, this is kind of the part of the creepy part. The creator modeled it on his wife uh, and, and also partially on Audrey Hepburn. Um, but what really struck me as interesting is when the interviewer sat down to talk to Sophia, which is the name of this, um, she said, or it said, I mean, it's hard not to say she, um, it said, I've been waiting for you and then started a conversation, which went to the point where Sophia said that she's sentient and has a soul and knows what it means to be human like what the shit right the obvious thing is that she was programmed to say that so we have that that that, that's certainly a possibility absolutely well that's one of the most difficult things that we'll ever have is determining you know did we just create a really impressive copy of intelligence or did Mm -hmm. we make intelligence at what point do you cross that line right um so it's like, well, it's like, oh, well, we can pass the Turing test. Well, I can, I can code something that will pass the test, but does that, does that necessarily mean that it, it's a sentient being that can, you know, be put on par with humanity? Right. And then what do you do with it if you do create that? Like, because now it's going to have processing power far beyond anything that we can do, even with our pretty awesome little gray matter exactly. uh, for how we are compared to other animals. So then, then what happens? Like, right. Uh, robots take over what what do we we have an ex machina situation what, what's gonna go what's gonna go on i don't know, I, I know ex Ma- on the topic of ex machina you do realize how fragile her body is like a, a strong enough wind will knock her body apart oh remember I'm he sure. slightly hits her with a weight and her arm breaks off like oh, she's yeah. going to collapse in the so movie, quickly yeah. But I, oh, yeah, yeah i guess before, not, not not before that guy suffocates in that room so true oh yeah yeah, yeah well it doesn't matter. She's not going to tell anybody where he is. I mean, no one else, except for that random helicopter guy who didn't seem to understand. He was there to pick up a dude and picked up a woman. Did question it, just took her away. Um, I, yeah, yeah, I guess my question is how I would wonder, and I, I'm no scientist, so I, I really wouldn't know, but how many combinations of responses do you have to program for before you cry? Like, I guess I'm imagining them determining whether this thing was programmed to say this or would it really say this by asking a series of questions similar enough and different enough to see if they get a repetition of response. I mean, when do you cross the threshold of the programmer has not given it enough programmed responses in order to emulate humanity? I guess I guess that's really the test. Like, sure, if you ask it one or two questions, are you human? And it says yes, it could be programmed to respond to that question that way. But how many times do you have to ask it that question in a different manner before its programming runs out of appropriate responses? Like it's that's really really creepy, I guess to me. Yes, yeah. well, it's, it's mostly about the algorithm you have and and what terms they use to flag. I mean, there are some pretty convincing Twitter bots, mm-hmm. which is one of the fun things about watching this election. Watch people argue with these trolls, and I'm like, you know, 
It's just human enough to make it look like it's having a conversation, but if you watch it, you'll you'll catch when it, it sort of does a non sequitur. I was fooled by one. That's... I was fooled by one. Yeah. yeah one people point. think people me, think the non sequitur is just is people think that non sequitur is just somebody being retarded, basically. Yeah. But it's actually it's, hole, it's a bot. You know? It's a bot, and it doesn't really actually have a response for you. It just has a series of of keywords it's looking for and using that to construct sentences based on those right. keywords. The robot might be essentially just a robot version of Siri. True. And if it has the because Siri can take complex and can take complex questions. Right. Can re, and respond to them. Wait, so, and I guess that's that's where it's going eventually because the the. The bigger and better we get with, well, not necessarily bigger, but the, the more efficient and better we get with programming and with, with hardware, the more responses it'll be able to put out before you realize that something's not quite right. You know what I mean? Like, the so better the computer yeah, gets, that, yeah. it can keep creating more more complex responses. It'll, so it'll the be test from Blade Runner. The, the main problem the is we're reaching, Runner, yeah. the main problem is, is we're reaching the limits of our hardware. Um, because you make the circuits so small that you can't even tell um, the on and off of the electron because the, the barriers between um, the molecular structures are not they're just not strong enough you know the, yeah. the, the fields that hold that all together it's just not strong enough so that the thing can jump and then then you you don't have a computer anymore you just have a, a random <laughs> electrical uh, creation machine I guess right yeah um, yeah so it, it it's probably going to I would wager it'll probably take quantum computing unless we come up with some ridiculous breakthrough in, in how we can layer chips in, in such a way to yeah. get something that's going to be both smart enough to, to be sentient and small enough to fit inside a room, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just amazing. It's really cool. Uh, but that led me to a second story, which this one caught my eye. because Have, have either of you guys watched um, the three seasons of Black Mirror? There, I think there are three seasons of Black yeah. Mirror. I have not. Okay, there is a show. Yeah, this is I. what got me. There's a show on Black... There's an episode of Black Mirror called Be Right Back. Um, and it stars um, Haley Atwell um, from Agents of Share, Captain America, and, and uh, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. spinoff. Um, oh. And the premise of the episode, because I, I don't know if you know, Black Mirror is sort of like a, a modernized version of the Twilight Zone, where each episode is a standalone story, and it's really weird. Some of them are creepy. Some of them are just kind of goofy sci-fi. Some of them are just really thought-provoking kind of, um, you know, social experiment type show, uh, episodes. But in this particular one, her boyfriend dies, um, and this service, her, her cousin or her boyfriend's cousin or something, gets her signed up for this service that says they can they can recreate him using AI. They basically use all of his emails and his text messages and his tweets and all the stuff he's ever put out on the internet, they use that to create an algorithm that will emulate him uh, in conversation. And, and the story progresses to the point where, um, and spoilers here, if you have not seen this episode of Black Mirror, but it, it progresses to the point where she actually gets a physical analog of him as, as sort of an android. Um to be him and that's how the and this whole episode goes that way it's a, it was a really cool episode but then i read this story on um on the verge uh which unfortunately that's where i found it but on the verge there's an article called speak memory um this woman's best friend died and she rebuilt him using artificial intelligence she used his emails and text messages and all of the stuff he put out on the internet to create an algorithm so that his friends and family could get emails and texts from quote unquote him um which like i'm like was she inspired by the show or like what the hell are we doing when we're when we're prolonging i mean I I know, she said in the in the interview in the article that she was in fact inspired by the show okay that's that's part of where the idea came from i think and that totally makes sense because I think that it's really creepy, is what it is. It is, and that makes yeah, sense. It's really creepy. That episode was a while back, but I mean, I just not. I don't talk about it too much, but I I just lost my mom uh, back in April, um, and I couldn't imagine prolonging that experience by having something I know is not her send me text messages and emails. Like I couldn't imagine what that. I think that would be like torture. Yeah, exactly. That can't because, be healthy. I mean, it's, I mean, because 
you finally get the closure on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my condolences, by the way. Oh, um, no, thank you. Yeah. Um, but you finally get the closure on that, and suddenly like, it's like a ghost shows up and starts sending you messages. You know, yeah. and at the same, at one point they're 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 sort of real, but I would think that would feel like someone impersonating someone you love mm-hmm. and messing with you. That's yeah. that's how I think it would, that would feel. Exactly. Well, and th- and then you get to the point like we were talking before. You get to the point where it, it is essentially an algorithm that uses his uh, phrases and his turns of speech and and his all the words he's used before to try to construct sentences. But eventually, you're going to come to a point where it's going to break the the veil. And say something that's not quite right, that's not quite him, or not quite, you know, not what you would expect. And then it will remind you that it's not real. It will remind you that even if you were to fall into the fantasy that you're being spoken to by somebody who's moved on, eventually it's going to break that fantasy. And that could be even more detrimental to somebody who's allowed that to become their reality. Like, I could see somebody who have a really weak mental state after the loss of a loved one letting this become their new reality and then having that crushed again like what good lord this can't be this can't be good at all and repeatedly yeah, because yeah. it's not like they'll turn it off afterwards what they'll do is they'll they'll walk away from it and then mm-hmm. they'll come back to it and it'll do it all over again so you'd, you'd have that happening over and over and over again mm-hmm. for as long as the person is willing to have the i guess you'd call it addiction you yeah, know, the inability to move on yeah. essentially. Um, yeah, that would that would be really dangerous, I think, because I, I mean, think about the potential for a suicide there, right? Mm-hmm. You 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 go through this this period of grief over and over again. Say, you could figure it probably every I don't know three weeks or so, yeah. three four weeks before it would screw up. Yeah, you you you'd feel like you'd have this thing all over again. So, mm-hmm. yeah. That, that's probably not a good idea. I, I, I would think. And then they turn you into that. another robot. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Where does it end, right? You know, does it just become? Do we do we become a society where half of our half of our uh, communicating population are people that have passed on that aren't even that aren't even real and just people we sit and talk? We don't even talk to. Hell, half the time we don't talk to real people now anymore, and and now we're going to talk to people that aren't even alive. Like, uh, that just seems like yeah. a really bad idea. <laughs> well, yes, it does. Is full of bad ideas. Yeah, that's that's very true. That's very true. It's true. It's very it, true. Speaking yeah. speaking of bad ideas, um, the next two stories. Nice segue. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure which well well two of these. Like, yeah. I'm not sure which two of these are the worst ideas, but there are some two and. It, uh, I don't know. UK, you people who live in Britain, you, I've got friends over there. I've got, I don't have family over there, but I do have friends over there. People I talk to and acquaintances that live over in Britain. And I feel really bad for the fact that they don't really have, they don't have what we have as far as it comes to a free speech protection. I mean, I guess it's always assumed that they have sort of free speech over there like they do they they can almost write what they want to write and almost say what they want to say but that seems to be getting whittled away uh more and more and the the U- uk's chief troll hunter this this guy um i don't know top... let me stop right there yeah go ahead they have a chief troll hunter well that's that's the i'm sorry that's the headline of the article i i don't think that's his title <laughs> I, I, doubt, I doubt that would be the actual title. I don't think that's his title. Well, but just, wouldn't that be? An... They, do they have a guy whose job it is just to hunt for trolls? Like I don't know. I don't care what his title necessarily is. But I mean, is 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 that just them like tongue in cheek? No, nope, they're kind of giving the guy a nickname, or is that his job? Is his job is to patrol the internet for trolls? That's, there, that's there is a guy. There is a whole bureau uh, for the CPS repeatedly tweaked guidelines. There is, if I understand right, a whole part of their justice system a whole section bureau department whatever you want to call it that is in charge entirely of um looking for internet harassment and uh trolls the only one who waste taxpayer dollars yeah. um, <laughs> but they have they passed more laws or they've redefined more of the current law um to not only say that this is where this is where it's really getting sketchy, and this is why it this is why I brought it up because everybody knows already that that you you have to be careful if you live in the UK you can't post certain things on Twitter anymore you can't post certain things on Facebook or you can go to jail. Um, now 
you can't share something somebody posts on Twitter or Facebook that might be construed as harassing. Oh, God. Um, you can't... Can you be jailed for retweeting. That's you, great. You can. You can't share something where somebody shares somebody else's personal information. Like we, what we, what we generally on the, on the internet call doxing, sharing any personal private information. In the United States, it's not illegal. It's just a shitty thing to do. Um, but in the UK, it's illegal. And if you were to even inadvertently share somebody's share of somebody's private information, you would go to jail. Um, and their their terminology is very vague. Someone, if you share, say you share a picture of somebody in which you allude to them being sexually promiscuous, that could be construed as trying to organize an online harassment campaign, which would land you in jail. So if your girlfriend cheats on you and you post a picture of her and you happen to use a derogatory word, you can like go to smut. jail. Yeah, you can go to jail for that. Yeah. Uh, and if you share that picture of your friend sharing the picture of his girlfriend who cheated on him, you can go to jail too. Uh, like, this is like uh, Zoe Quinn's absolute fantasy for yeah. the legal system. Yeah. It's, yep. it's it's so it's becoming so broad and so vague um, that it's almost like just don't post anything like don't post anything that could be even remotely considered mean um, you know it, yeah be nice but we have the right to, to not be nice when we don't want to be nice um, so this is why I joined Gab <laughs> Yeah, it's. I didn't. I didn't touch that because I have. Because not. It's got a lot of. Lot of alt right people on it right now. They they need to figure. They need to fill they've, out uh, more. They they've been they've been branching out quite a bit since I got on Good. it, and that's it's only been a Good. couple of weeks. I mean, they they are definitely committed to the whole free speech thing. I mean, there's 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 an absolute commitment there to the point that they've actually tried to invite like libs and sjws you see that you see calls for that a lot like hey we're, we're not going to be an echo chamber because we don't want to be an echo chamber it's not any fun hmm. but for me it's just like i can say anything. i don't have a big enough following over there and most of the people who follow me over there don't necessarily follow me on twitter yeah. so i can say whatever the hell i want and I don't, I don't have to worry about getting into an argument about something so like if i go on a rant about you know the republicans or something to that effect i don't have to i don't have anyone tweeting back at me that i'm going to feel compelled to have some some long prolonged discussion instead of getting stuff done that right. day so it's, yeah it's, it's nice to have another place to go for the time being but uh it's actually hold it you know it's basically an alpha product and it holds up pretty well i mean they had it up during the debate and they had like ten thousand people all oh wow uh, gabbing uh during that time period and uh yeah. didn't even crash so oh pretty good that might be a good yeah, at least a good that. yeah because it's gab the verb of it is not as doesn't roll off the tongue as much but whatever <laughs> yeah i don't know what they'll do about that but, yeah uh, you know it's not a, it's not really a big deal they can always they'll probably still call it tweeting when twitter eventually implodes but uh yeah get in now while you can get your name because there's not enough people over there i'm, I'm tempted to create like 15 email accounts and just sign up all kinds of popular stuff and sell the accounts <laughs> so, the thing. why not everybody else if does it that becomes too. popular yeah. If it becomes yeah. popular, who knows? If it doesn't become popular, you just have a bunch of random stuff. Gab.ai. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Let's see. Why don't I? Why don't? Why don't I set up one while I'm at it? Go take a look at it. Don't get in line until they get until they give you an invitation because usually they're about. Oh. Uh, I'm number ninety-one thousand seven hundred and ten <laughs> on the waiting list. <laughs> Woo. All right. Well, well, you're in line. There you go. That's <laughs> a, that's a good place <laughs> to be. Quick, so yeah, we got that. And then on on the uh, on the flip side of it, and this this is the one I'm not sure is a good or a bad thing. Um, so on HollywoodReporter.com, um, I read the article that Milo Yiannopoulos and everybody, if you don't know who Milo Yiannopoulos is, uh, just Google the name. Uh, there's so much. I'm not even going to get into how much information there is about this guy. He's he's a reporter. He's, he's just, a journalist. Just Gamergate. He was involved yeah. with Gamergate. He was probably he's, the most well known journalist. He, got he, he is eyeing a bid. Uh, they're actually he and a, and a wealthy backer who, of course, is going to remain anonymous until the deal goes through. And if the deal doesn't go through, we'll never know who it was. Um, they're eyeing a bid for 4chan. They want to actually buy 4chan from from the Japanese entrepreneur who owns it. And um, Milo is saying he wants to do this to create 
an actual haven for free speech. Um, I thought we had 8chan for that. Oh, well, I mean, even even 8chan had its issues, didn't it? I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I stopped following it quite a while ago because it just seemed like it kind of fizzled out, but yeah. I assume they were still there. I think they are. I don't know. I haven't heard much about them. I know that, you know, I know that Reddit has, I mean, you can get banned on certain things for Reddit for saying th certain things. Uh, 4chan has its issues with censorship uh, based on moderators and whatnot. Um, this is one of the few things, like, I've had my ups and downs when it comes to Milo and the things he writes, and generally, um, I don't really care for the guy. He hasn't gotten that Gamergate book for, out yet. Yeah, I mean, as far as what he writes, he writes stuff, that obviously, that's very centered to a specific audience. Uh, he knows the audience he's writing for. He is a smart dude uh, because he knows exactly what he's doing. He's He's gotten a huge following based on what he's written because he's targeted his audience very, very well. He's done a very good job of that. But the one thing I will give him is he has pretty much been an unwavering at least in the, the last two or what three years now that i've uh he's i've i've known he existed um he has pretty much been an unwavering advocate for free speech um i That's don't milo has no shame right yeah he'll say he'll <laughs> yeah. say yeah exactly kind of. um which is, i mean that literally that's part, the of, that's part of his pro that's part of his problem it's part of his problem it's that, also part of his charm. I yeah. He also calls story. Trump. He also calls Trump daddy, which has <laughs> massive implications That's for his mental welfare. Weird. He yeah. is gay, so you know. Yeah. Yes, I know, but it's really weird. It's yeah. really yeah. weird. It's hard to say. That's not really weird. I. It's also. Fu he does funny stuff too. Like one time he was in California for an event, and he hired a porn star as his bodyguard. That was funny. That was yeah. a good troll move on his part. He's got. He's, he's good at that. But some, but his writing, his writing has kind of fallen off since you know he kind of decided to only talk, said to talk about Trump about fifty percent of the time. Well, um, it, unfortunately, it, it, it's clear that that he, the thing is, is he's gotten so popular now that he he can kind of get away with just being intentionally provocative, and mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter what he's talking about. I would read his Gamergate book. I'd read his yeah. Gamergate book if he ever published it. He said there's like over there's well over a year ago that he said he was writing this book and he there's been no word on it since he first published an article about it. But yeah, I'm writing a book. The transcript has been accepted or my treatment of it has been accepted. I'm writing the book and then nothing. Yeah. Well, it does it does take quite some time to put out. I mean, if it's being published by a large publishing house, it it's not something that But you... the, he hasn't given out any word about it since though. Yeah, so I we don't, don't know. even know if he's still working on it. No. Well, it's kind of uh, like the scholarship thing, which he, he said like a couple months ago that because of the tour and everything, he just basically forgot about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, the, the big completely. problem was that he took money from the charity and cashed it into his own account. Yeah. That was the problem with that. Yeah. I don't know if that's been cleared up yet. Probably because it would be illegal if he didn't clear that up. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. He's, he's, he's already got the money, so it's not like he need Like, we know he, he had money before then. Right. Because he had done a tech startup or something and sold it, and uh, made some good cash doing that. So I, I don't, th I, I don't think he pocketed the money to pocket the money. He probably no, just said, put it no. somewhere. And because a lot of the problem is how many people are actually going to want to accept the scholarship from him, considering <laughs> the implications. Mm -hmm. That's the big problem. If they I might have know. too selective of an audience to accept scholarship. They, they'll find they'll find somebody, but yeah. So yeah. It, I mean, if he, I, I honestly, this is one of the few things that I've seen that he's claimed or that or that he wants to do that I honestly believe he he wants to do. Like this is well within his. Um, his character and his toolbox to to buy 4chan to create a place where you can say anything you want to say i fully believe that that's what he wants to do um without yeah. a doubt i don't it, doubt it either whether they'll sell it to him i just don't I, it's um, just weird that he's going after for it's 4chan though i mean uh, i don't know i mean it's got to make some money 40, it's, well it has it has has a reputation for being the um, what's the, what's the, the internet? Way to see <laughs> yeah. No, um, for Kitty, for CP, that's not uh, good. It, it, he, a safe haven for free speech only goes so far as what's actually legal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so the problem with that, well, that, was, yeah, that was, that was 8chan's policy. Yeah. Anything, any go, anything goes unless it's illegal. So if it's yeah. like, if it's child pornography, down it goes. Yeah. But otherwise. Yeah. 
Unfortunately, Four Chan doesn't have a f doesn't have an exactly the best standing with that one. Honestly, he might as well just partner with. Why doesn't he just partner with Eight Chan? You think that would, I, because Four Chan is more well known and it's bigger. I mean, why would you buy? Guess, why would you buy Kmart if you had the opportunity to buy Walmart? Because Kmart's probably a lot cheaper to buy. Probably a lot cheaper, <laughs> but it's also the biggest risk. If you it's had shutting the shutting down, it's shutting down right now. If you had the if you had the money to buy Walmart. Why would you buy Kmart? That's I mean that's the question because Kmart's failing. Uh, this is God, I mean I that's the example. I can't imagine how expensive it would cost to buy yeah. Walmart considering it's owned by the Walton family. The, the um, only way, the only way you do that is if you really think you can turn it into something. Right. And I'm guessing the idea is like, you know, eight chan and four chan, they're basically the same thing, but there, there's nothing that you there's nothing unique enough about. 8chan that you could use it to overtake 4chan's population. Yeah, I guess. I think is what it I is. Guess. Exactly. 4chan being more well-known. Um, and yeah, he would be, and, he, and if he doesn't, I'm sure the caveat's, I mean, the caveat is implied. If somebody who lives in the United States buys 4chan, the company really becomes based in the United States. Any users who live in the United States are subject to U.S. law. Any users who are based in Canada are subject to Canadian law, and Canadian law He's is even more strict. not based in the U.S., though, so it would actually be U.K., Oh, and yeah, he's UK, and their laws are, well, we already know their laws are a lot stricter than the U.S. when it comes to posting I stuff. guess it depends on how, <laughs> I guess it depends on, on who exactly buys it, if it's True. Milo buys it. Or if it's Milo's corporation that he set up in Dubai, buys it. True, you know? yeah, that's true, yeah, too. Yeah, the question here, um, yeah, he, does he live in America now fully, or does he still live in Britain? I'm not sure. sure he still lives in the U.K., yeah. He's, I mean, he's been yeah. doing a lot of the college tour, so I don't think he really. A lives lot of the, da the, the dangerous faggot tour, yeah. That's the, by the way, just in case any of you are offended, that is the official name of his tour. <laughs> of course. Because I think somebody called him that. I think somebody called him that. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna call my tour that now. Yeah. And, well, right. he was he was saying at uh, the first stop at the new tour that he was really depressed that Hillary Clinton did the deplorable thing, because he's like deplorable fa faggot would have been such so much of a better name. Yeah, yeah, I I see that. I believe it. Uh, so yeah, that's it for our small hunk. So we are actually going to jump into the major part of the show. So before we move on, there are going to Luke be spoilers. Cage. So if you have not finished Luke Cage, please wait to watch the recorded portion of this show unless you don't care about something being spoiled. Um, Buy the soundtrack. It's really good. Yeah. There, there's nothing to spoil, so just go ahead and listen <laughs> to us anyway. Trust me. We had we brought Cranky on specifically because I didn't want three people talking about how amazing the show was. I heard – I mean, I heard <laughs> – I, I did. I heard you didn't care for it as much, and I thought that would be a great way to discuss the show because then we could talk about what we do and don't like and then maybe uh, bounce ideas off of each other about what things meant or what they didn't mean or, or what we did and didn't like. Uh, and every – yeah. And the best thing is, each of us like a different one of the of the Netflix shows yes. more than the rest. Yeah, I, I like yeah. Luke Cage more. You like Daredevil. Cranky likes Jessica Jones yep. more than the others. So, so we're I'm all actually, getting uh, good. Go ahead. I'm actually working on on my review for that. Hopefully, I'll have it up tomorrow. I wanted to have it up today, but um, oh, real for life got in the way. So. Jessica Jones or Luke Cage? Uh, no, for uh, for uh, Luke Cage. Oh, cool. Obviously, it'd be a little late oh, to, so, do, uh, so, to be a so Jessica Jones some, uh, review. <laughs> This, this, will, this will give me some time to you know refine my arguments a little. there you go exactly <laughs> that'll be good because then you can then you can see what what exactly what what people in person uh, did or did not like about the show uh, but mm -hmm. essentially uh, for those of you who don't know Luke Cage he is not a huge well-known uh, Marvel character he's been an Avenger he's been a mm -hmm. dare he's been a, uh, a defender he's been in heroes for hire he's been in Hero his own for title. Hire. He's been his own title, uh, and he's been in several other titles, including one of the more famous uh, duos being Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Um, and he's married and has a kid with Jessica Jones. Yes, that yeah. Later comes when when they're both Avengers. Uh, they I think it happens when they're both Avengers. They get married and have a kid. Uh, that's when Jessica actually stops being a superhero for for the majority. When she has a kid, she pretty much hangs up her her uniform. Um, Luke Cage is one of... And then of... her kid becomes future Captain America. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they did that recently. Um, <laughs> so Luke so Cage... Is that the Captain America who's still doing Hail Hydra? Is, is that... No, the that's a... Or... No, no, I'm saying in Rogers. the future, she comes from the future as De <laughs> yeah. Danielle Cage. She's in the... She comes from the future and she's Captain America in that in yeah, the future. It's so, a... Yeah, it's... Yeah. 
Lots, lots of good. Because they wanted good. her to be a superhero, and they didn't want to wait for her to grow up to do that. Yep. So <laughs> anyway, Luke what? Cage being weird. Yeah, they are. Yes, they are. Um, but Luke Cage has been a good allegory um, in the comic books for you know a lot of he's been used for a lot of different reasons when it comes to writing stories whether it be inner city representation or talking about uh inner city crime or just you know when they need a diverse story to tell not necessarily need that makes it sound bad because for a long time luke cage was an extremely popular character that was done very well by marvel comics um and he's was, one of my favorite lesser known superheroes yeah he's been really well liked as little known as he is he's been really well liked um as far as the comic he book had goes. one of the best 70s costumes ever yeah the the opened the opened yellow sh- the open yellow shirt the bl- the black pants the uh the L- with the i think they were bell bottoms mm-hmm. the leather shoes that are like almost oh, elevator yeah. shoes the chain belt and the circlet on his head yep. it's just all of that oh, together has yeah. been one of the that, best costumes ever. That, that is actually probably my favorite part of, of the show is seeing the little trick that they did to put him in that costume uh-huh. for all of five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I loved that. I did like, like that. Fool. I did like that. You so, look like a damn fool. So the show did change some stuff. Um, it changed his origin they made slightly. Him from Georgia. They changed yeah, they the made reason. Him from yep, they mm-hmm. they made him a cop as opposed to a former gangbanger. They changed why he went to prison. Um, not completely Although why how he got to prison was essentially the same. Yeah, Diamond he, back to he was him. he was still framed by his friend, but the reason he was framed was different, and how he was framed was different. Yeah. Um, so they did change that, but they didn't yeah, change in the comic it. books. It was they they both loved the same woman and uh, his yeah, the, yeah so. Reba, who he winds up meeting in prison. So they completely changed her relationship with Luke. Um, they need to explain why she was killed by by uh, the Purple Man again. Yeah, I, can, I don't by remember Kilgrave that. For, for that thumb drive, what would she do? It's confusing. They'll probably yeah. explain that a little bit more in Jessica Jones season Probably, two, probably. Um, One hopes. Yep. Yeah. So hopes. <laughs> I did. I didn't enjoy it as much as as Daredevil season two. Maybe as much as Daredevil season one, uh, and I liked it better than Jessica Jones. Um, but they were all to me very fantastic shows. Um, <laughs> Marvel knows how to do its Netflix. Not much its network programming, but it's it's Marvel. Yeah. It's Netflix shows. It's somehow giving. I just. It's nice that they're able to play with the toys in the toy box. Yep. Agents of Shield just doesn't get to do it as much for reasons I don't adequately understand because there's so many small villains. Budget. That they're never going to do in the movies. Because they're on ABC. They're yeah. on ABC. I know. But they they move to ten o'clock so that they can maybe get a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I'm saying I want them dark. to do characters that they, they did Absorbing Man in the second season because he's such a low grade villain and they're not going to do another uh, 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 Hulk movie so it makes sense to use some Hulk villains because they're never yeah. going to use them otherwise but there's so, so many it, villains they could use it just kind of comes down to to first of all who are the writers like and mm-hmm. second of all who can they afford on a budget yeah you know who can they who, who can they do the whatever their powers are going to be they're doing you know, Ghost Rider I mean that's not cheap that no, Ghost Rider. Ghost cheap. Rider is a known property that people yeah. will come to watch the show for. And That's they're why. doing. Although I don't even like yeah. this. Although Ghost it's Rider, not so. the Ghost Rider, it's like the third. It's Ghost Rider. yeah, but the and they're also one. doing the whole season pretty much about Ghost, so they can afford to drag. Like, they can't do a Monster of the Week show and have every How are they villain. They're going to do a season of Ghost Rider. Well, that, how are they going to do but, a whole season? I don't know. We'll see. Cool. But we'll, again, they, they it's probably why I stopped watching in the middle of like three they, episodes in the third season. But they can't do a monster <laughs> of the week. Point. They can't do a monster of the week sort of thing because they can't afford to do the special effects for different villains every single I, episode. I know they need to build up. A, um, there's a problem with Marvel is they don't have enough villains to do like asylum type things. Like, see, this is a good the one. The one good thing about the DC extended universe is that. They, because they said it like 10 to 20 years into Batman's career, there's all these villains that are already there. So if they want to use them, they can. Yeah. Well, the I mean, they can... is there's so, all their villains are dead except Loki mm. and like one other villain. There's it's there's some that's around. There's plenty to go around. But Red but Skull back to Red Skull. Red Skull is somewhere. I don't know if he's dead yet. They may bring him back. Back to um back to old Luke Cage though. Um, yeah. I guess we should say. Sorry I, about the tangents. No. Um. I liked, and I guess we'll go over what we liked and didn't like, but I liked best, I think I liked best about the show is that it 
handled a lot of it handled a lot of issues I expected it to handle poorly. It handled them very well. Um, I was worried every time I hear somebody say we're going to make a show about diversity or we're going to make a really diverse show or we're going to make a show that's going to handle social issues. I get really worried that it's going to be a, a ham-fisted beatdown uh, from the pulpit of of these issues. And it and wasn't. They managed like, to do it well. I was they, I was worried a little bit too, but they managed to nail it so well. I, I liked that I liked that they didn't cast every bad guy as a white person or every good guy as a black person or well, or no every, because no but, all, but every white guy was either an idiot or an asshole though so I, I did notice that with some amusement I didn't I didn't really care there was only like there was, was only funny. like three white guys in the entire show. And they there were was, all idiots and assholes. You got Shades, who was, 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 was an asshole. Shades, was an asshole. The racist the scientist cop. is an asshole. But, and but it was like the, one, racist, the racist cop. And that's it. They're all, all the white people. And, oh, and they're not racist cop, dirty cop. Veget oddly enough, vegan dirty cop. That was, that was the funny part about that guy. Yeah. He was vegan and dirty. That was an interesting combination. What, you, you think vegans um, can't be dirty? What's... Yeah. You think no, I just, I just yep. find it an interesting. I just find it an interesting. Uh, I just find it interesting that they would make him morally against eating meat, but also make him a, 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 a dirty cop. Like he mo eating meat murderer, is against him. He yeah, didn't, he didn't mind killing a human being. So exactly, <laughs> that, that exactly. Yeah. But I, meat is murder, but murder isn't bad. I yeah, what? he killed. Yeah, I think back. Theo Rossi is technically um, Hispanic, isn't he? Yes. The guy who played Shades. Yes. Yeah. So there's only like three white guys in the entire show, except for some side characters like the people yep. in the precinct who are angry that about still, cops. That guy is still the whitest Hispanic guy I've ever seen. So I like I, I didn't even. No, you you don't you don't know my brother-in-law. <laughs> so what what turned off what turned you off the most about it, Cranky? What was it? The that... show has no, the show has no stakes, um, and that really comes from three, three things. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing is you, you've got the Superman problem because you have an invulnerable hero, right? right. So you got a guy who's Judas literally bullets. bullet, right? Well, that's a low-grade kryptonite. It's not, and and they don't even use that that well in the show. So the first problem is, is you've got this guy who's basically invulnerable. He's going up against villains who do not have any powers and 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 do not seem to have any. Uh, capacity to come up with any ways to fight the guy, mm -hmm. right? Because well, Moira came Cottonmouth... up with a few, and they never tried them. See, see, Cottonmouth. Yeah, yeah. We'll get. I'll get to that in a sec. Cottonmouth yeah. is your low, your low grade, average street level gangster, right? Mm -hmm. And the guy, his solution to every Luke Cage problem is, I'm going to send a bunch of guys with guns to shoot at him. Right. It's like, well, you already know he's bulletproof. You know this isn't going to work. You know he's he's also got he's also got super strength. So it's not like you can just restrain the guy. Mm -hmm. And his cousin says to him, well, why don't you, you know, he's got to breathe, right? Why don't you try drowning him? And they make this scene. Or to poisoning be, him. Or poisoning him or, or whatever. They, they make this scene out to be really, really important. Like, okay, we're foreshadowing that Cottonmouth right. is going to figure out that there are, there are ways to attack Luke Cage that don't involve bullets. Nothing happens. None of the, nothing comes of that scene. He never tries that. He just goes and tries to get the Judas bullets or whatever, the, yeah. the low-grade kryptonite. I think so, the joke about there was because they were hammer tech, they were ineffective. Yeah, that well, was part I, of the I, joke. I, I, well, that's that was the joke I kept making. I'm like, who the hell is buying Hammer Tech's crap after what we saw in Iron Man two? Mm -hmm. But because they're the only because pe only Iron Man knows their shit. <laughs> that's so, why. So, so basically, you have an invulnerable hero against villains who are too stupid to to work around that. Mm -hmm. You have a, the other problem is is normally a villain like that would they would just go after your friends and family, right? And I think right. this is where one of the changes they made to his backstory really hurts. Um, Luke Cage is completely antisocial. He does mm -hmm. not want to make any friends, and the one friend he does make is the one guy that everybody in Harlem respects and would not mess with, yeah. right? including Cottonmouth. Cottonmouth is willing to overlook the whole thing because it's this one guy, and it's only because of something stupid that 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 we don't have that we even have a show in the first place, right? Because mm -hmm. if, if that and when Harlem Pop dies, he immediately kills the guy who killed him. Yeah, throws I mean, him off a roof. If that if if that guy hadn't decided to step up for whatever reason at that point, I mean, that guy's got to know shooting up Pop's shop is not acceptable. So mm -hmm. the fact that that happens is clear. Writers like we're stuck in a box now. We know that the show is over if they have this. Parlay. I didn't think they'd kill him that early. Honestly, I didn't think they'd kill Pop that early. I thought Pop was likely going to not survive the season. I was very surprised they took him off, took him out in the second episode. 
Yeah, it was but the quite problem with that is the show was over right there. So what what you end up having is you have a guy who has no weaknesses now because you have you have villains who are not threatening because this is the other thing we don't see them doing anything really that is like this guy is a real threat like we need to stop this guy like Kilgrave is a guy who can who can force people to do whatever the hell he wants to do mm-hmm. and that's that's scary and it's threatening and Wilson Fisk is brutal murderer guy and, yeah. and he wants to take over the whole city and stuff right he wants to take right. over. this guy is but, just your average level gangbanger and he's for a gangbanger he's a pretty you know, even-headed guy. The fact that he's willing to, to to be like, oh yeah, okay, well we'll overlook this. We'll just have a negotiation about it. Right. Um, and the fact that he doesn't really have any ambition. He's not. He just he just wants to get back. Because to we his, find his, out later why. Because he was thrust into the life and he didn't really want to be. Yeah. In. But 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 the problem is, is you have a guy, you have a hero who doesn't really give a shit about anyone there. You have a villain who's not really a threat to anyone there, and they're only fighting because they're having basically a dick measuring contest. Mm-hmm. And. There is no possible I think, I think, I think Luke Cage wins that contest. Let him but... keep going. But, but there's no <laughs> possible way for the villain to win that dick measuring contest because he could just walk in yeah. and snap his neck whenever he wants. And yeah. it's not like Luke Cage doesn't do that because he has like a Superman kind of moral thing. Like he doesn't like, like murder. He doesn't yeah, like he doesn't, murder. We know that. But he won't. But he. But we know he doesn't. As the show presents him, the show does not present him as a guy who would, who would have a significant objection to doing that. In fact, he considers it at one point in the in the show, as I recall, and somebody talks him out of it. And it's like mm-hmm. he could totally just walk in there and break his neck, Cottonmouth's neck, and this thing is over. Right. So because the yeah. show has no stakes, I think they realize that about halfway through, and that's when they throw in the random villain from nowhere, which is his. It wasn't of... random. He was uh, he was mentioned about eighty times before he showed up. No, Diamond it was, uh, was Shades is bass. Yes. Yes, but that whole thing doesn't make any sense because it has nothing to do with with what's going on at that point. And then he just he just shows up and he has a problem with Luke Cage randomly it's like he just comes out of nowhere no, and the only reason he's a threat, let, let me finish talk. let me finish yeah <laughs> the only reason he's a threat is because he has the magic bullets that he only uses once and and then after that it's like okay and, and, the, and the bullets don't even hurt luke cage that much he, he survives a full a drive all the way to georgia and then an acid bath and and they pull the shards out of him and then he's fine mm-hmm. 15 minutes later so That's, now the one thing they never show them removing the bullets from his abdomen they only show them removing from the shoulder um, yeah. I don't know if anyone else noticed that. No, they um, showed that. They, they showed three the shards ad- out, and that's it. Yeah. And they didn't. They didn't show him removing the ones from the abdomen for some reason. I don't know why. No, it was the other way. No, no, it was the one, she pulled them out of the abdomen, not the yeah. shoulder. He got shot. No, the no, shoulder. I saw. Well, I saw. I, I think it was. Well, we'd have to go back to the tape. Yeah. But um, basically, they only pulled three shards out, and they're all in the same place. So right. they didn't. They didn't. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like. I didn't they, like that. But the point is. But go the point ahead. is, 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 is this show has no no tension and nothing. There's no hook, right? There's nothing from like. By the third episode, I'm, I'm like, okay, where's this show going? And they keep dragging things out by putting things in that just, they're they're random and they don't have anything to do with this. Like the whole subplot with the cousin, right? Mm-hmm. She's she's supposed to be this politician who is, is is somebody who tried to eschew the life and became this good and upstanding politician. She gets dragged back into life. But yeah. from the she's first ruthless moment though. Her, from the first moment you meet her, you can tell she's already a a um a corrupt politician. Yeah. So. The, yeah. the, the notion that she fell from grace and becomes this bad guy suddenly is just like okay yeah she was I I, I saw her in the first episode I figured she was going to start shooting people yeah. so having her flip out and, 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 and kill off your villain your, your weak you know, kill him with a knife okay. he was good the guy played that was a really well acted character it was a waste of it was a waste of a really good actor because he, he's a really good actor but his what he's playing is nothing his his character is nothing. He, he he's not he is not a threat to the hero, and the hero doesn't even want to be a hero. So what should do you should note that his yeah he should notice his character in the comic books wore a snake suit and had filed teeth. Was, so at least they didn't do that with him. <laughs> well, that would have at least made him interesting. That would have made him look like he's a psycho or something. But he's he's just well, a dude yeah. who runs a nightclub and who happens to sell guns and drugs on the side. What and I he's, Diamondback Diamondback is there now. There's that line where he says pimp stormtrooper. Um, that is actually his co- the, the the suit he was wearing was actually his costume that you see in the second issue of Luke Cage. In the comic books, Diamondback only survives the first two issues of Luke Cage. Um, he's a big part of the Orange story, but he dies in the second issue. Um, so 
they're adding more dimension to the character of Diamondback than they had in the comic books. They, they didn't add any de- dimension to him. He's just crazy. What I and, and half the time and it's useless because they needed the somebody to go against him. They needed I, some, I think he said, bye, he said bye, Felicia. I don't like that. I think <laughs> what I, I think what I'm getting and I and I totally I, I see where you're coming from and I think the failing that they did have. Um, here is the 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 main villain like i never i never saw the politicians thing as a fall from grace i always thought she was corrupt and she was just didn't want to know the the dirty details of what was going on uh but she wanted to reap she wanted to reap the benefits of those of those things um i agree but the the story they were trying to present with that character was the fall from grace i mean that that's what she was already corrupt she was already taking money from her campaign to front yeah yeah but uh, but this is why she keeps she keeps talking about this no we're we're really trying to do good here we're really trying to do good here this is this is that's her public persona right no she's no she's doing that to him with him in in private every yeah. time we're talking about it, and he's like I, we're just laundering money it's just i like, think we, yeah it, it's, it, it's just a it's a bungled storyline is what it is it's I, like they, they could not decide what to do with that character i think they were trying I to love present shades, shades was really well yeah i think they were trying to present a bad person because i mean we all know that the the villain even a even the worst person in the world believes that they're doing what they're doing for the right reasons um i think they were trying and maybe failing to present that particular scenario she was a bad person obviously a bad person she didn't think she was a bad person she thought she was doing what she was doing to help her community um without realizing that what she was doing was hurting her community uh and i think the other failing was that they didn't diamondback is the overarching uh villain in the show but i don't think they made that clear enough um I thought, no, they didn't. I thought Shades was going to be Diamondback because that would have made sense because like right. he's there as Diamondback's presence from the beginning yeah. and the only reason his presence at all in the show makes sense is if that's what it is is that he's yeah. actually Diamondback he's shown up and he's just checking on this guy and this guy's his friend yeah. but Shades characterization is we find out that he's yeah. nobody we find yeah. out he's nobody but he has some well, obsession with designs uh, he has designs on higher power yeah. he has designs well, I, on power even, beyond his boss but he could have he could have just whacked Cottonmouth at the beginning when he got out of line, and he right. just like by the time he gets around to doing that, and then like it's like okay, I want to be with her, and then he he's betraying Diamondback to be with her. Like the, his whole like this is this is this is what I'm talking about in terms of padding. Like this whole subplot with him is just it's non it, it doesn't belong. You know what yeah. I said on Twitter is you could take this whole series and you could do it like a two hour sort of black exploitation toned movie, and mm-hmm. it would have been everything that that show ha- actually had and right. if you actually had some kind something of a compelling villain if you if you went back to having luke cage live have come from harlem then you'd have a reason for him to want to fight for for harlem yeah. right he doesn't care about harlem he's not from there he's just hiding out there and he'll and and he spends half the show trying to decide if he's just going to take off and run yeah. uh, anyway like he's ready to just pick up and go so like um, basically like i said you have you have a hero's not fighting for anything you have a villain who doesn't really want to fight the hero except for now they're dick measuring each other um, who can't really hurt the hero, mm-hmm. um, and then he, get, he gets tag teamed out by a villain who's just nuts and comes out of nowhere, like just random, like okay, well he's pissed at his half brother because his half brother didn't go to jail and he did, kind of thing. And it's like, um, and then did, did and a, then he sent his brother to jail. How how did he become a criminal mastermind? Like how right. did, how did, you know, you know how does a nut, how does a wacko like him like get to his? This is, this is the same problem I had in Daredevil with Kingpin, is is Kingpin's. Um, the, his number one or whatever the guy who's who's doing who's working on his behalf for the first half of that show mm-hmm. i thought was a really yeah. effective villain because he's scary because he, he represents a threat of something even greater than him and, and inherently he's just kind of he's like unassuming villainy you know like right. here's this weak looking dude but he he's yeah, they sure. killed they killed that guy a little too early yeah but then when yeah. kingpin shows up kingpin is clearly not a guy who has the character or the or, you know or, or the he does not have the the presence of mind to maintain enough discipline to be the kind of guy who becomes the head of an organization like that, right? When, but if you're going to flip out, D'Onofrio. I hate I hate his performance. I hate the. the, the <laughs> I, I talked about loved, this in the I love Kingpin. I talked about this in my. So his performance in that yeah, movie was weird it, because he had the weirdest it, accent. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's the same. It's the same thing. I I, I had this I, because he he talks like this from the back of his throat the whole show. 
It's like just just speak normally. Yeah. Vincent D'Onofrio is creepy enough as it is. Just yeah. just talk like a normal he person. Is, he is. And the, the voice in Magnificent Seven was from the front of his throat. He had like the weird squeaky voice. I didn't get what was uh, going I'll, on. I'll, there. I'll say a prayer for you. He talks like this. Kind of yeah, it's it. weird. It was really weird. I did not understand what he was talking. Like what that. I what I did <laughs> like, and I think that they handled well, because you have a character who is physically and powerfully like Superman but not not of the same moral standing as Superman um, I think they did a good because the, the one thing that they can never do for, with Superman for me is they can they a they can never give him a, a physical challenge he can't overcome and B they can never give him a moral challenge that, that he can't overcome because he's a very like black and white character he's, it's either right or wrong with him. He, he he as i as i said in my man of steel review he's he's the absolute fantasy yeah. right of having infinite power and then infinite morality yeah. right altruism you're, 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 yeah. you're absolutely altruism. you are absolutely morally good and you are also infinitely powerful so that you don't abuse that power yeah so. and so with luke cage you have a, a guy who's who's not i mean he's not a bad guy but he's not he's not that absolute moral guy he's he's just a decent guy and he has he's trying to be a morally upstanding gentleman he's yeah he's doing his best to be a decent person which which is which makes him human makes him far more human than, than the superman character ever was because we can at least relate to somebody who's doing their best to be a decent person um, and then he also has this power what i liked that they did with this show is that every fight scene isn't actually a fight like there are a lot of times he walked up to some bad guys and he's like hey you guys really don't want to do this and they know who he is and they know they can't shoot him and they they run away and i'm really sick of buying new clothes yeah if they don't run away he <laughs> pops them in the head knocks them out or takes their guns and breaks their guns not every encounter with luke cage in this show was luke cage throwing people through walls and throwing them over cars and blowing things up and i actually liked that i a couple people commented that there weren't enough fight scenes in the show but i was actually glad they didn't do that because i'm tired of seeing every time they want to show us how powerful somebody is they do that by having him punch people through walls and tear down buildings and blow I, like things when he up. Bent, I like when he bent the guns like they were made of candy yeah it was really awesome I think my, of, my problem with the with the, the fighting as far as it, as, it, as it goes is that it's mm -hmm. it's kind of diminishing returns that helped that helped a little bit mm -hmm. uh, for me like having him show up Chris this addicts though like, so. it, it had it had it helped a little bit to have some people just be like all right I'm not I'm not doing this this is stupid yeah. um, but the problem is is when you have a guy who can you can just shrug, shrug off bullets after a while it's just like okay he just beat the crap out of another 15 guys who right. have no chance against him so you, 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 it gets boring, right? Yes. It's like even the could they shoot him in the, the eyes? I, I thought about that. Apparently, nobody in the show did. This, 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 that goes back That'd to the whole. Hard, that would be a him. really hard target to hit, probably. Let's see. Well, and if he, mean, and assuming if he closed his eyes, he wouldn't. It wouldn't affect him because you know. Well, I mean, when you have on like the fifteen guys all using fully automatic weapons, surely at least one of them could hit him in the face at least once. Yeah. You know. Right. And and I do. Well, I do. They're, they're, they're trained to shoot for center mass, though. I, I do agree yeah. that the, that there are there are definitely those issues with the show and there's gonna be issues with every show yeah. like that um, but yeah I, I really enjoyed how they handled some of the stuff I do think they could have introduced Diamondback earlier made him a little bit more important yeah. because when they do bring him in like you said you kind of wonder why um, like they tell us why unless you're but, familiar with the background unless you're familiar with the background of the character you're kind of wondering why he's there I would admit yeah. that but I knew who the character was so I was just waiting for him to show up at that point. I mean, the second they mention him in like the first or second episode, when when Shades goes Diamondback to me, like yeah, you Diamondback. So I knew he's gonna show up eventually. I was just like, who who the hell is this guy, and what does he want, and why does he have a hard on for Luke Cage, and yeah. and why is his first act to show up to try and assassinate Luke Cage, and not like deal with the guy with with Cottonmouth, mm -hmm. who's obviously gone off the res reservation in this little dick measuring con. Like the thing the thing that bothers me the most about that is how somebody actually says to him, you know. Luke Cage doesn't seem terribly interested in fighting with you, and you can't hurt him, so why don't you just drop this whole thing and go back to what you were doing? He's obviously not going to stop you. And, yeah. and he shoots that guy in the freaking head. Yeah. And I'm like, this is really out of, this seems really out of character for you. Was that uh, for Diamondback one, who did that? Oh, no, no that, that was, was that, no, that was, uh, that yeah. was Cottonmouth. Was, yeah, he was reading the book. He was saying, I'm reading this book here. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it's about... <laughs> and that, was, that was right after, uh, that uh, was... Uh, 
right after something. What that was right after Christmas. Was right, Addicts. I think it was right after the Christmas Addicts. Yeah, that was right oh. after Christmas Addicts. But, I mean, he was understandably pissed the fuck off. Yeah. But but the problem is is that that lesson is never learned. Like even oh. when he gets even when he gets embarrassed, like when they have the little dueling speeches thing, which was lame. Um, I love that. They they walk out and and it's it's just like dude. You can't even you can't even beat him like giving an impromptu, you know, funeral address, which is probably the worst place to do this sort of thing. Right. Um, if you can't even beat him like with the people, then just go back to selling selling guns and drugs. I mean, th- th- Luke Cage obviously does not care about this community. Didn't sell to do drugs, but yes. Yeah. And this is why Only I sold guns. They, yeah. This is why I think they really should have made it so that Harlem was his original home. Yeah. And he grew up there, and he and he knew all those people. And and so he's come back after all this time, you know, had gone to prison and all that stuff, you know. Even if, even if he had moved to like Georgia when he was a kid, and but you, you know what I mean, like if he yeah. had if he had they something, they seem they seem to, to only have done it. Yeah, I think they've only yeah. done it so they can name the first episode of the Defenders that Daredevil went down. Uh, I don't think that's I I don't think that's gonna happen. But I I do. Because that's what's gonna happen. No, I don't think they're gonna get him out of prison. I, I don't think they're gonna call the the show that the writers. While writers can be lazy, I don't think that they're that lazy. Um, He's such a, writers, they better we, use writers, Charlie Daniels. We writers do love our puns, though. We so, do. Yeah. It, yeah. it yeah. might happen, but I, I do, I do agree that they definitely should have. They should have given him a bigger connection to that community, other than because I think the only connection he really has to that community because it isn't pop is related. Is that Riva to grew up there. Reva, that yeah, Riva grew up there. That's the only connection they get. And we to don't it. even. And we don't, we don't like, we don't even really get a good sense of why he is enamored with her. Like he, like they have that. They, we only see her for that one episode in yeah. the prison, which I think is the most interesting episode of the whole show. It was pretty because good, that's yeah. the one, that's the one where everything is, everything they're trying to do with the overall arc of the show is mm-hmm. is what they succeed at doing in the prison. Right? He yeah. he wants to be antisocial, but he makes a friend in spite of himself. That friend can't protect himself, and. That friend is used as leverage against him, so the villain is is legitimately a threat to him. But he's trying to work out this, and then at the same time, you have this overarching, you know, uh, uh, story dropped of they're doing experiments on people, so you know that's coming. So you've got you've got all of these little things that are kind mm-hmm. of hooking you in. And the problem is they resolve all of that in one episode. Yeah. yeah. If that, and Sigourney Weaver is going to be the villain in the Defenders, so yeah. we have if things that, to look forward to. Yeah. You what? What I think they needed to do was take that that should have been the whole show is you should have just done a prequel to Jessica Jones where we were explaining where the hell Luke Cage came from. Yeah. And the whole show should have been in the prison and show, or or actually should have started before prison where he's just a guy and he ends up going on trial and he, and he goes to jail and then he gets in jail and we see this slow friendship build with this, this guy and we see him slowly fall in love with Reba and, and all the time this, this racist white ass. I would have been bored by that. I would have been bored by that. Well, the the thing is, and the thing is that would have comic books didn't really work. spend much time on the, his time in prison. He Good. went, he went to, he we, they covered his early childhood. He went to prison. He got his powers and got out of jail and got his costume in one issue. Well, they also in killed, the they also killed Diamondback in two issues, but go ahead. And they cranky. Killed Reva. No, they killed, they killed Diamondback in the second issue. They killed Reva in the first issue. Go ahead, Cranky. Reva's dead by the end of the first issue. I, I would, I, I'm just, I'm just saying that that episode, is a, is a microcosm of what they wanted to do with this show, uh-huh. and that's what they should have done. So that's part of why, like, you know, if he, if he had a connection to Harlem, or if you if you actually had him come in and you meet Pop, and he's sort of, like, standoffish with Pop, but he slowly kind of builds a friendship with him over, mm-hmm. like, six or seven episodes or something, and you start to see him, like, really get immersed in this community, and then some shit goes down. Some real, something real, like, you, you Cottonmouth decides... I'm taking over and I'm going to start smashing businesses, whatever, even if it's something small like that, yeah. but not like, Oh yeah, these three dipshits robbed like the most powerful gangster in the city. And, uh, he found out and pop likes one of those kids. So please go find this kid who doesn't even want to help in the first place. So I'm just going to, okay, I, I found him and he didn't do anything, but he came back because I talked to him for some reason. And then he gets choked out by the cop. And, um, yeah, and no. then it, I mean, there's just, there's, there's no stakes in the show. And I mean, compare that, Compared to the relationship to how Jessica Jones works, right? Jessica Jones, you have a hero who's fallen from grace, who doesn't want to be. It a turns hero. out there were no stakes there. The no, ending twist of, him... of that season showed there were no there were no stakes. Let him because yeah, she couldn't have good... been controlled by him the entire time anyway. But that was she could have snapped his neck the let... first time she uh, saw him. But, him but she finish. didn't know that, which is what 
she didn't know that, which is what makes it interesting. She thinks at the from the beginning of that show that if he gets anywhere near her, he can he can mind control her into doing whatever the hell he wants again. Like that she. But once again, you have to remember that if when you pause down, there were technically no stakes in there either because she could have killed him at any time. But she but didn't she, know that. But technically, no, but there were no we stakes. Don't, we don't know that, and she doesn't know that. So yeah. for us, there are stakes. For us, as far as we know, he can turn her against her friends, make her do all yeah. kinds of awful things. And, and I saw that, that, and I saw will. that twist coming a mile away, by the way. That's okay. Go I ahead. saw the twist coming. Go ahead, Cranky. Yeah. 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 But the, 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 the point is, is you have a villain whose powers go completely around the heroes, right? Mm-hmm. She's super strong and mostly invulnerable, just like Luke Cage, but her villain, that's... that's no, she's not. She, can get, she can get bullets. She got shot in the show, remember? But I, I said she's not as, yeah. not as... Not to the point yeah. of him, but yeah. she, she has this... Yeah. She has a very similar... She has, she has a very similar power set, right? In that... Most of what's going to come at her, she's going to be able to deal with physically. Right. But she can't do anything yeah. to him physically because he, he has a power that, that goes beyond that. And not only is her physical strength ineffective against him, it's actually a liability. Because if he gets her, then everybody's screwed. Same mm-hmm. thing with – that's why Luke Cage is actually more interesting on that show than he is on this one. Because yeah. in that show, if Kilgrave gets a hold of him, he's a, li- he's a liability for the whole team. True. So yeah. you, ha- you, you I, have a situation I, where it's, it's a personal conflict. It's a very personal conflict, and oh. and the stakes are very very high because if he gets her, then you know, shit's getting real. So, mm-hmm. you have a whole you have a whole different kind of, of setup. Whereas with Luke Cage, you're just you're just sort of dragging these things out, oh. and you have you have you have nothing that's really at stake here. You have you have a hero who doesn't really care, and you have a villain who, do, who doesn't really care, frankly. And then you have I a liked villain. all oh, of the. Uh, I liked all the characters. I thought the acting was really well done. I thought the writing was really well done. I liked the character. I understand where you're coming from, a little bit, but I I didn't see as negative. I didn't see the villains as negatively as you did. I saw them as filling, serving their functions. When 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 Diamondback died, I did not see his death. I mean, when um when Cottonmouth got bumped off, I did not see that coming when it happened. I was like, I know she's gonna flip out, but I didn't think she'd fucking murder him. Oh, that was I just that, thought he lived was... to see another. They, that was what they were setting her up to do is to, yeah. to flip out and murder somebody and once we got to that point it was like okay he just cost her her reputation that's the only thing she cares about she's going to flip out and she's going to do something stupid here and, I, and one of them's going to walk out of here dead right or not walk out of here I guess I wonder <laughs> um, I wonder if as opposed to he's a, yeah. I wonder if as opposed to a, a hero villain story like Luke Cage or like um, Jessica Jones or like Daredevil I wonder if they were I wonder if their intent was to show a, a story of a community with with a with a superhero in it, um, because you're right they they didn't really present a challenge to Luke Cage up until the last even the last episode it was not much. The Pimp Storm Trooper came around. Um, so I, I wonder if that was <laughs> I wonder if that was their intent and maybe they just didn't pull it off as clearly as as we'd like. You know, like, does that make sense? Yeah, I, I uh, look, know, Diamondback it, will come back in the Defenders, and we'll have will be a challenge to hit Luke Cage. It's it's hard to to know what they were trying to do because of all of mm-hmm. all of this random stuff that they keep dropping in. You know, right. to me, it just felt like they were padding it out. Maybe they were that's what they were they were going for is they were trying to just show this is a community and this is what it's like having a superhero that just kind of shows up and and is here now. Right. Um, and the community think, loves him. I think if they Bold did a love. I think they did a better job of that in Daredevil, um, mm-hmm. because the, the community like, really didn't embrace him. Though that's the thing with Luke Cage, the community embraced him relatively quickly. It, that's another problem: is, is they they're just like, okay, we like Luke Cage now, and then well, so, they hated well, him because they thought he killed somebody, and then they started to love him. It, but they they don't they don't really know him, and we don't really see them right. interact with him, but for like that one episode. And even then, they're not. They don't really like him. And then he goes and he gives a speech, and everybody loves him. And and I was like, this seemed like I. What would have been more interesting for me is after he gave the speech, like they basically were all like, "What the fuck are you doing here? Why are you talking? No one cares what you have to say. Yeah. Get the hell out." Kind of thing. That the biggest problem like, was that Shield didn't seem to be all too concerned. There was a guy with bulletproof skin. <laughs> that in that was another big. That was another big issue in terms of like, oh yeah, there are no stakes. I mean, like. We know that Shield they, goes around looking for these people. Jessica Jones yeah, I know. They immediately. News. She, yeah, I know. But Luke Cage was on camera. They, he was in broad daylight, well, uh, throwing rubble around. This I mean, is yeah. why wouldn't the 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 time frame of this show? I believe is when Shield is disbanded. 
I, I know, but they're still around. All it would have taken was one lanyard being tucked into a guy's pair of pants that shows that there was somebody keeping an eye on him. Oh, That's all I they had to do. A, I think that would have been a perfect opportunity for them to do a little quick Col- Colson cameo and yeah. just really cement, really it cement didn't even, the It didn't have to be Colson. It just had to be... They, all they needed was a shield emblem no, I somewhere think, I to think, show that this one random guy is keeping tabs on the situation. I think they could do yeah. a little bit more tight. That is one of the things I do have an issue with. the Because it's not like the DCEU and the DCTV where, where we know they're separate. We know that the Netflix universe and the MCU are, are connected. We know they're in the same universe. Um, they could do a little bit more to tie those together, I think. Um, whether it be... And one of, of them... Uh, all three of the, of the defenders that, right now. Yeah. And one of the big problems with that is we know Tony Tony Stark lives in the damn city. Right. So the the fact yeah. that like a throwdown like that happens, and same thing with Spider Man, like a throwdown like that happens, and no, nobody just like pops by to be like, what the hell? Oh, right. Um, Brooklyn, it's too yeah. far away. I live in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> or I live in Manhattan. I'm not gonna fly over. But another big problem is all four of the defenders are stronger than two, at least two members of the Avengers. Hawkeye and 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 Black Widow are just normal humans. Yeah. All the def- all the defenders are stronger than either of them. Why wouldn't the Avengers want their help? My my thought here is that the possibility at the end of the first of the Infinity War movie, that it ends because Thanos is coming and it ends with a big calling card for everybody to help them fight him. They do, and the and the last movies and the second part of the movies just gonna be a three hour long fight. <laughs> would that would surprise me. I, I hope that would not. Be, you had any that idea how cathartic most, that would be if it was that just would be three the hours most, of fighting? That would be the most boring I, I, thing in the world. I, I, I trust the Russo it's brothers dialogue. not to do that because yeah. they haven't let me down yeah. yet. They've made two really good movies yeah. that have but some really You know a big movies. part of the last movie is yeah. going to be a throwdown. A big part of the last movie is going to be a throwdown. Well, no shit. It's, That's it's, why we go to these movies, yeah. dude. <laughs> it, it should be, but the whole thing, I mean, there better be some some something behind it cuz honestly well he's going to get the he's going to get all the infinity go, he's going to get all the infinity stones yeah. by the end of the first part he's oh, going to yeah. have them all so what does he do in, and at that point he is technically unstoppable oh. so how do you stop him no no we'll find out i guess so yeah that's also also <laughs> they have to cover the fact that why are there two infinity gauntlets cuz no, they the don't. Infinity Gauntlets only have one stone. They only have the the. There are six stone settings in the first gauntlet. Why are there two now? Where do where? There are two who's... gauntlets now. I'm lost. There's I one in get... Odin's vault, and then there was a different one that Thanos picked up. No, he he got in the, the one from the vault. Mid... Yeah, he got the one. No, from no, no, they're they're different hands. They've confirmed that there are two Infinity Gauntlets. Oh wow. Uh, uh, yeah. On. If you notice, I believe I believe it's a left hand in Odin's vault, and it's a right hand that he picks up in Age of Ultron, in the mid credit sequence. These oh, are well, small uh, details. That I apparently, yeah. <laughs> that that actually, that actually would uh, explain how they they could potentially end up beating him. Is there will be another six stones and another gauntlet, and huh. one of the, one of the Avengers will get the other gauntlet and will will fight. And yeah. That's how they'll, yeah. They'll, they'll break. They'll break. They'll they'll they'll. they'll basically punch each other and break both gauntlets is probably is be my guess yeah they're there, gonna do that there was they there, also really need to bring in death at some point kevin kevin Feige. that's kind of thanos entire motivation for his genocidal rampage is that he wants to impress death yeah kevin kevin feig did did confirm that there are two which is there weird. are two but yeah it's probably Confusing. why they need they need something they need something cinematically uh logical to beat something like that they have two infinity yeah. stones left, so I imagine one will probably be revealed in the second um, Guardians of the Galaxy movie, and then probably maybe Thor Ragnarok releases the other one. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, excuse me. Because yeah. they only have maybe Doctor Strange. I know because they only have two left, and the question is which of the movies before Infinity War yeah. will have the stone. It's not going to be in Homecoming because that wouldn't make any sense. Um, but. Yeah, there's two that left. That would be funny think, as hell. Yeah, it would yeah. be. <laughs> one of them is time. One of them is time. So they, they have that one. So it would be one that time travel is useful in. So maybe Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I, I don't know. They'll, they'll yeah. figure it out. We'll see. And the other one, I think, the other one is reality. I think that's the other one. One that affects reality. Maybe that's the one they have. Yeah, I'm not sure. Power. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. Yep. That, that, part, yeah. that part of this. I trust Marvel a lot more than I trust yeah. DC right now. I'm. That's because Marvel knows how to make decent movies yeah. and DC doesn't. 
That's so yeah, far, so far very DC, true. DC, DC, for some reason, <laughs> yeah, DC hasn't figured it out yet. Mm. I mean, I, we'll see. They know how to do TV well. They know how to do the the, the, the CW shows are really fun. I highly enjoy them. Oh. They don't have the special effects budget uh, that they should pro- that it would be nice if they had, but of course their budget isn't as high. But they're really well done shows, and I like the mm. characters. Well, they managed to write ca- good characters. As we've delved off into the non Luke Cage stuff, I think we've taught we've we've <laughs> extended past our hour. So thank you, gentlemen, for the wonderful conversation and the good back and forth on what we did and did not like about the show. I'm sure it's going to be a hot topic. By the soundtrack. It's going to be a hot topic until March when everybody gets to throw fits and love Iron Fist. Uh, oh so, yeah, that's gonna be awesome. That one's good. Uh, hopefully he will gonna, be better he's than. He's gonna have the dragon tattoo on. on his chest. Hopefully he'll hopefully be. Awesome. He will... Go ahead. Hopefully he'll be better than Black Exploitation the uh, the series. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we get a good show out of that one and at least something so we that get, we can join. So what you're saying is we hope we don't have Asian exploitation. In well, the he no, he's... I'd be okay. I'd be okay with that because that'll be kung fu the movie. Yeah, so that'll be fine. We we want to see we want to see something reminiscent of of. A really classic kind of uh, Bruce Lee type uh, movie, at least. If, if not Bruce Lee, you know David Carradine kind of thing going on. So we'll see. I hope Ico Uwais is involved. Did some of the fight choreography, maybe, because he's the guy yeah. from the Raid. Uh, we'll see. He was, he's he's part of why the fight scenes in Force Awakens were so good, because the people behind the Raid did help with the fight choreography there. Nice. So all right, it makes sense. So we're going to take it out for tonight thank you gentlemen for joining us thank you everybody else if you watch the live show until the end uh or if you're watching the recording and you like our content please like comment and subscribe Uh, we need 45 more subscribers to get to that 100 so thank you everybody for joining us much love and you guys have a fantastic week thanks for having